Greetings, kinsmen. In our last episode, we worked on the door and finished that up. We just have one more thing to do. I'm going to be drilling some holes to tie the door into the wall so they all stay together in one complete circle. Otherwise, this thing will fall down and collapse and break itself. And that's going to be a bad day for the beard if that ever happens. I'm using the yardstick to line up exactly where I want my holes to tie into the wall. <laughs> yeah, I've got too much junk in this garage, but you work with what you got. You know, if you only have a 10 by 10 space or you you got a porch to work on it's better than nothing and I'd say get after it make what you want and uh, take your time when you have the time so here we have our old friend the trusty rusty combination square and then we're just marking right where our holes should be drilled Eventually, I'm going to figure out where I want those holes. So I want it to be just the right size of that joint, not too big to where it'll slip out and not too small where I can't get it in. You know, come to think of it now, after all of this, I don't think it would have mattered. As long as I had something tied to the wall and it was strong enough to hold, I think it had been fine. So yeah, I mean, your discretion, wherever you want to put that hole, you could probably put that hole and still be safe. My only warning would be, don't make the hole too big to where you're compromising the integrity of that door jam. I'm sure you guys are going to have some questions, so go ahead and ask them down in the comments or point out all the things that I'm doing wrong. And I can't learn unless you guys say something. I really do appreciate it. Thanks. The more you do something, the more you realize how you've wasted time and added extra steps and you didn't need to and uh, it's kind of valuable to go back and watch this old stuff and say you know what I could have done it better and there's nothing wrong with going back and reflecting on things that you've done to improve it for the next time now that I've marked my holes I'm here to drill them out don't drill through the door that we just put don't drill it there you go Again, we're using a 3 8 inch drill bit for that 1 8 inch jute cordage. Overall, I had about eight holes for each door jam. That's four pairs, and each pair was for one tie that went into the wall. So um, I made a mistake, I forgot to record exactly where I put those holes. So I need to do that now so I can drill the holes on the other side. So yeah, don't do that. Don't be dropping anything on that nice soft white pine. I'm trying to remove the door and instead of unscrewing the hinges and ruining the wood every time I unscrew it and screw it, I'm just removing the hinges and getting it out of the way so I can drill on that side of the door jam. By the way, this could be done with a flathead screwdriver, and uh, it, but you could ruin it. So, you know, whatever you got on hand, you don't necessarily need to have a center punch. I'm just marking where all the holes are for this side of the door jam so I can mirror exactly what's on the other side. Using our trusty rusty combination square to make sure that we're in the same exact depth as the other side. to hit that like subscribe and that bell button so that way you guys don't miss any of the uh, new episodes that are coming out
I'm cutting this little corner piece off because that's going to sit right on the bottom plate and otherwise the wall is going to sit above the door and it just look, wouldn't look right. And of course doing the same thing on the other side. So I'm fumbling around trying to figure out how long I want each tie to be. Eventually I'm going to figure it out. Now I can't remember exactly how long, but that looks about three foot. I think erring on the side of having just a bit more than you need than not enough, obviously. Right now I'm just doing a test fitting just to make sure it ties together. I don't want to have this whole thing set up and find out that these just aren't working. This is the tying method that I use and I think it's a bit more complicated than it really needs to be. I think if you just tied a double knot on that uh, that little joint, that, that little crook there, I think that would have been more than enough. Also keep in mind that there's going to be, you know, a lot of steps to put this thing together. And the more simple you can make each step and the fewer steps that you take to set it up, the easier it is for you. You know, it might have only saved me a few seconds, but you multiply that over the entire day and you're going to save yourself some significant amount of time and you're not going to feel nearly as tired. Something to think about. So some of you have noticed just how alien this shot looks. I forgot to white balance it. I tried to fix it in post here, but I'm not so sure about it. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. With any project, make sure you're taking plenty of breaks. You don't want to burn yourself out and start hating the project and start ruining your hobby. Now we're on to the other side of the door and I'm including this final clip just to show you guys how I tied in that bottom piece into the door. And it's just a simple going through the hole and tying a slip knot and calling it good. For those that don't know what a slip knot is, it's like tying your shoes, but just one loop instead of two. Now we're moving on to the center ring, which holds up the rafters and the whole roof of the yurt. This stuff is called garden edging, and this thing cost me about 20 bucks, but it was perfect for what I needed. And I'm gonna show you how I put it together. Originally, I wanted a three foot hole, but I didn't have enough material even in that whole roll to make what I needed. I wanted at least two passes or two revolutions with that garden etching, or should I say two layers. And I think I got about two foot, no, 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 about a foot and a half of, uh, of diameter. And that was enough for what I needed. I don't know of any screws that would be short enough to really go through two layers of this stuff and hold it all together. So my best plan, I guess, would be to use staples and then break off the end pieces so it doesn't stick out of the, uh, the plastic garden edging. So I'm just kind of floundering. Uh, I wouldn't say floundering. I'm trying to figure it out. And sometimes you just got to 
go out there and try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And you learn from it, try something different next time. Maybe that'll work. The best way to get these staples to break off is not to cut them with a wire cutter, but to just grab it with some pliers and move it back and forth and break them off. And they break off clean, nothing sticking up above. I'm going to put these staples all over this thing and on both sides, on the outside and the inside. I'm going to break them off. So it's, it became pretty tedious, uh, but you know, it got the job done. It worked. Well, it worked for the most part. You'll see in later episodes. Yeah, it uh, doesn't look all that sturdy. It's a little worrisome, but you'll see how well it works. I'm using that vice clamp to kind of mash down the staples because they are wiggling themselves out and away from the piece, and I don't want that. Now I'm trying to measure the circumference of this entire piece and I'm using my tape to it and not doing a very good job. So I came up with a plan of using a tape measure that you use for sewing. As you can see it's working just fine. The plan called for 12 rafters so I took the circumference and divided it by 12 and that's how many inches there were between each hole. Using our combination square again to mark the exact center of that roof ring so we can make our holes dead center. So I'm using a one inch speed bore bit to get what I need to get done. So some of you are screaming at me right now. I'm drilling through some of the staples and that's gonna ruin a bit. But these are really cheap uh, discount tool store bits, if you know what I mean. Don't wanna say the name on, uh, on air. I'm just cutting off all the burrs and whatnot to make sure I got a nice clean hole. Pro tip, don't cut near or towards your hands. To reinforce the whole structure, I made sure that I added some more staples on the outside and the inside again. I 
started putting the vise clamp right on the center of the hole. That way I didn't have to move it around to get to different parts of the hole. My trusty rusty razor knife was not making it, so I decided to try and take out the blade. Maybe I can get a little closer to the project, but even then, that wasn't working. So I took my round raspy file and started going at it, and that seemed to do the trick. One thing I was noticing when I used my raspy files, it was kind of creating some rough spots, some hairs, if you will. And I plugged in my wood burning tool to hopefully burn away those hairs, but it didn't work. And I think the reason why it just didn't have the power that I needed it to have. Now onto the rafters. I harvested all of these sticks from a friend's property. He's got a whole patch of this stuff. It grows like a weed out here. And I just had to select which sticks were just right. I wanted to make sure they had the right uh, diameter at the top. So it was one inch it fit inside the holes or at least less than one inch. And um, you're gonna notice that they're gonna be very imperfect. You could probably buy something online, but I like saving my money and my time. I'm going to drill holes through both sides of the stick. This side is going to be a loop that's going to hook over the wall to attach the wall. So all the pressure of the roof is going to transfer down the wall into the ground. Oh, right. Um, I drilled that hole down to about quarter inch. So that was plenty of space to get the jute through the hole and do what it needs to do. Now the narrower end, that's going to go into the roofering hole and I'm going to lace and put a little knot head on it. I made sure I drilled next to the, uh, the joint of the bamboo and that'll help it um, keep it from sliding down and slipping through that hole. I made sure to cut the stick about four, three or four inches above that knot hole and it has to be consistent all throughout the whole, whole project otherwise it's going to be uneven and it won't look right. This extra amount that sticks through the roof ring also keeps it from slipping out and having your roof come down on top of your head. And now for test fitting. Perfect. Now to do 12 more. Using a hairpin again to lace it through, by the way. And it's just ideal. It's nice, strong steel. Does the trick. Learning from all of this, I found out that having extra sticks in case some of them broke on you is a really good idea.
the next step would be to sand it all down. Make sure that it doesn't rub up against your skin, cut you, give you a splinter, or the canvas. Make sure that it doesn't cut through the canvas. Otherwise you'd have a hole and be leaking all over you. So spots like this right there, that will definitely put a hole through my roof. Real quick review on the Black & Decker Orbital Sander. I really like it. I love the paddle switch function. My other sander from a discount tool store is a switch based. I don't particularly like it. It just becomes cumbersome to reach around to the front and turn it off. This is so much easier to just turn it on and off without, I just have to release my grip does what I needed to do. I thought I could save myself some time and carve off the little pieces, but it just took about the same amount of time and it made my hand hurt a little bit more. It may look like I'm about to hit my thumb, but my thumb is behind the bamboo enough to where the blade will just slide over the top of it. As you can tell, it's very green bamboo and it's crooked. And I'm trying to straighten it out by heating it up and getting the uh, fibers nice and loose so I can uh, put it in the right position. Negative Ghost Rider, try again. I'm going to give it one more try before I give up on this idea. Now I got to go back out there and get another one. If you like this episode, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell button. And don't be afraid to leave a comment below to share your thoughts, advice, and questions. If this has helped you in any way, buy me a horn of meat on my Ko-Fi or head over to my Patreon. If every sub gives just a dollar a month, our projects will become more epic and our stories legendary. I also have my own merch, so you can show your love for the channel and look good doing it. But more importantly, be humble, be helpful, and be honorable.